In this video, we will be now talking about the last general class of hydrocarbons, and that is aromatic hydrocarbons. Technically, they are also unsaturated, but they have this certain property that even in the introduction we were talking about, I said back then, I think it's not uh, proper yet to uh, discuss the property of aromaticity because aromaticity is something that requires uh, several factors uh, in order for us to say that a certain compound is indeed aromatic. Well, when we have uh, aromatic hydrocarbons, most of us would probably recall just one molecule and that is this this is benzene why because actually for aromaticity we need three main factors first factor is it must be cyclic this requirement must be met first meaning that all other compounds which are not cyclic are automatically not aromatic Second factor that must be, or the second requirement that must be satisfied is that all carbon should be sp2. Alright, so what does this imply? Look at this. Look at benzene. All of these carbons are sp2. But look at the arrangement of their double bonds. It goes in the arrangement double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond. And how do we call that? We call that as conjugated system of double bonds. And what else? If all the carbons in the ring should be sp2, what shape do we get? As in sp2, the shape that we get is planar. So in this second requirement, it will this will imply that the compound must have a conjugated system of double bonds and must be planar all throughout. The moment that there is a carbon in the ring which is not sp2, it will automatically be non-aromatic because it will not anymore be planar all throughout. The third requirement is, uh, we're going to do a little math. It's named after a certain person who discovered it. Okay. Huckel's rule. All right. Uh, the, the you that looks uh, like a smiley face is really cute. Anyway, Huckel's rule has this formula 4n plus 2 wherein the n is the number of pi electrons take note not pi bonds pi electrons so here for example how many pi electrons do we get we have three pi bonds we know that but that would translate to six pi electrons six pi bonds we yield six pi electrons so what is the requirement for Huckel's rule How, in Huckel's rule n must be a whole number the moment you see something like 0.5 there 1.5 2.5 that will already violate Huckel's rule how about in benzene what is our n here all right our n is our n is 6 okay uh, by the way, uh, thi I stand corrected. This is not the number of pi electrons. 4n plus 2 is the number of pi electrons. Alright. So again, I'll just rewrite that to be sure, to be clear. 4n plus 2, this entire formula will yield, will yield the number of pi electrons. And it should be a whole number. Let's uh, put here 6. Because in the benzene ring, we have 6 pi electrons. Let's try to see if n will be 2. Uh, I mean, if n will be a whole number. 4n plus 2. What happens? 4n, we transpose 6 minus 2. 4n is equal to 4. Divide that. n is 1. Is 1 a whole number? Check. So does it follow Huckel's rule? check all right so that's uh, th those are the three requirements for aromaticity now let's talk about the reactions of an aromatic uh, ring uh, I, I could call that an aromatic ring because being cyclic is a requirement anyway so here uh, look at benzene ring 
this is benzene and each of the carbons here have one hydrogen right just like alkenes and alkynes an aromatic ring has a lot of electrons so between a nucleophile and an electrophile most likely the one to react would be one which like electrons of course it's in the name already right electrophiles so we most likely reactions would be electrophilic now the problem is would it be addition or su uh, substitution we don't know it's possible for it to be addition right because if it's going to be an, ad an addition reaction what happens for example let's add chlorine we have chlorine here and uh, well let's try uh, to assume that benzene would react the same way that alkenes and alkynes would react this is the way alkenes and alkynes would react right you remove the double bond and you, you, you replace it with the reagent the problem is this uh, the issue is this aromaticity gives intense stability to the ring of course unlike some of us humans who like it uh, the hard way compounds they they take it easy if it's very stable then it will not anymore have a uh, spend any energy be becoming unstable the moment you remove the double bond here will it still be aromatic no because in the first place you remove the double bond the, these two carbons become sp3 you already violate one of the rules all right then you also violate the Huckel's rule because if we have four electrons let's try to calculate 4n plus 2 is equal to 4 let's just make this very quick what do we get n would be one half and one half it violates Huckel's rule so this is not any more aromatic so this is not something that benzene would like so what happens what's the other possible thing if you want to add something if you do not add you go for substitution so let's try this one so what happens is we have this ring here and we have hydrogens here well what you could do you put chlorine there one of the chlorines and uh, this is the original hydrogen of the benzene you remove that hydrogen so as a product what do we get we get this and uh, this hydrogen has been removed and remember we have two chlorines what happens a plus a b <laughs> what's a plus a b plus c d yields a c plus b d so this is indeed substitution and what happens here we the most important thing here if we did substitution was we maintain the aromaticity of the ring and so this would actually the mechanism that benzene would like and so the general reaction of aromatic hydrocarbons is electrophilic substitution electrophilic substitution electrophilic substitution don't get it wrong lightning will wait for you outside when it rains very hard now um, let's go to certain examples of electrophilic substitution reactions I'll just put a benzene ring here at the middle let's go first what if we do we do the same thing as we did here for example let's add X2 well we need a catalyst in this case usually it's the fer uh, it's the ferric salt of that ion and uh, well obviously the product that we get is we just add one X here so we get a uh, halo benzene if we start off with benzene that is now what if we add nitric acid and sulfuric acid so in this case I would like to say that sulfuric acid will actually get something from nitric acid what is that so HONO2 this is also nitric acid I just separated one of the high oxygens right this is O3 uh, 
So if this is still nitric acid, what happens is that nitric <coughs> I mean sulfuric acid is actually a dehydrating agent. What happens is from nitric acid it removes OH and it leaves this NO2 with a positive charge. This is the nitronium ion. Okay. Having the IUM suffix means it is positively charged. Uh, just in case it will not the symbol of NO2 positive is not given. And simply you add the nitronium ion to the uh, to the ring. So here we get a nitro benzene. My font colors are now being uh, mixed up. Anyway, what if, for example, now we? By the way, this the the name of this reaction is nitration, simply because you 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 used nitric acid. Now, if we have nitration, we have sulfonation, and as the name implies, it adds a sulfonyl group. Actually, here we get a SO3. We use SO3, which is sulfur trioxide that's a gas and sulfuric acid collectively the combination of these two is called fuming sulfuric acid uh, here just to make uh, uh, just to make it quick the the electrophile that will be formed is actually he this one or the sulfonium ion and uh, we know the drill already. We just add that SO3H here to the ring, anywhere in the ring. All right. Now, uh, how about uh, the very simple things? What if we hydrogenate it? Use three moles. Well, simply that's very quick. We just get cyclohexane. Very simple. Now, what if we undergo oxidation? We use an oxidizing agent such as uh, potassium permanganate this is the rule as long as uh, as long as benzene has a substituent and if that substituent has uh, a hydrogen in it then it will be uh, producing benzoic acid uh, let's give us a more specific example so we would not uh, you know try to imagine stuff so here let's let's see for example, I have here C H two C H three, and uh, in this case we have, for example, tertiary butyl uh, group. If we have this undergo oxidation, the product will always be this benzoic acid. Always. As long again, as long as the carbon directly attached to the ring has one hydrogen with it. What if we have this carbon here? Look, this carbon is not attached to any hydrogen, so that is an exception. So even if we have it undergo oxidation with a uh, permanganate, there will actually be no reaction because there is no hydrogen that oxygen could replace. All right. So here, no matter if the if the substituent is CH3 or if the substituent is uh, CH, uh, then you you put something very long there. Doesn't matter as long as the carbon has a hydrogen, you produce benzoic acid. But the moment that there would no there would not be any hydrogens, there would not be any reaction. Also, now uh, we go to the last two. The first is if you use an alkyl halide. All right, an alkyl halide in the presence of aluminum chloride. All right, here actually the 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 electrophile that you would produce is, well, the X would be negative. It would not be the electrophile. The electrophile would be the R, and this would be an alkyl group, right? Any alkyl group can be designated the letter the letter R. So we say that the reaction here is called alkylation. And usually they give it the complete name along with the uh, the name of the ones who have uh, discovered this reaction. This is Friedel Crafts alkylation. So simply the product is you just add the R group there to the ring. Now what if the R group you would like to attach is 
actually an acyl group meaning an R group but the carbon directly attached to that X is a carbonyl carbon well there's not much difference the only thing that would differ is the name so it's Friedel Crafts acylation and uh, a note here is that if this becomes cleaved what are the products X negative and R C O uh, positive so the positive charge would be on this carbon so it, so you would uh, so it should be noted that the carbon that would bond directly to the ring is the carbonyl carbon so if we have this ring we attach this acyl group the first carbon that would attach is the one which is the carbonyl carbon and then the R follows alright and uh, actually that's it about the general reactions of aromatic compounds but uh, it's uh, too pa special to be just like that and so um, in the next topic we will talk about uh, certain factors that a certain substituent would give to a ring so if there is a substituent it would actually influence the succeeding substituents so it may not ma make sense especially if uh, you were you sleeping during the class uh, for this topic but we'll discuss it